for roads, make sure the gaps are filled because last week also people were just stagnated by the door. It's not good, it's not good for safety, it's not good for a masjid. So there's a lot of space, mashallah. Whoever's in the second section, we ask them to please come in and fill the gap. If the gap in front of you is filled and the gap beside you is filled, please have a seat. Jazakumullah. <coughs> Alhamdulillah, <laughs> رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ربي زدني علما وحقني بالصالحين سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم سبحانك لا فهم لنا إلا ما فهمتنا إنك أنت الجواد الكريم My dear respected elders, brothers and sisters in Islam Some may consider it to be somewhat hypocritical 
that the entire year they're, neg they're negligent, distracted, careless, away from the masjid and the Qur'an, away from prayer and the prophetic character, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and come Ramadan, boom, they're all in. They're praying and fasting, reading the Qur'an and conducting themselves in a different way. One may see this in themselves or possibly in others and consider this to be hypocrisy. You know, if, if you're such a good Muslim, why are you a Ramadan Muslim? If you're so kind and generous, why is it only in Ramadan? If you see cheating and lying, why is it only in Ramadan? My dear friends, remember one thing. I'm going to pause here. Sometimes, our actions take people away from Islam. Keep that in mind. Because every single action that we conduct, every single word that we utter, is either bringing someone closer to the reality of the truth or pushing them far, far away. Going back to the topic, a person may see this in society, or they may see it in themselves and consider this to be hypocrisy. But I want to tell you all today that the mere thought of this and the concern in regards to this is good. For one to be even thinking in this manner or to be concerned of such a state is a good thing and I'll tell you why. Let it be known that the month of Ramadan is about two things. It's about restoration and reconnection. Take these two things home with you this afternoon. Ramadan is about restoration and reconnection. Number one, restoring hope and fear through rebuilding your connection with your master. A person in the Arabic language who is considered a sinner is termed as Aasi. Aasi. Not Asim, Aasi. Because Aasi means someone who's gone so far away from Allah that they don't see Allah and His presence and His power and His promises anymore. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses all of us, myself first. Tubu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha. Allah is not saying repent, He's saying turn around, turn around, turn back, backtrack your steps and come back to me. So in this month we are restoring hope and fear through rebuilding a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we reconnect with Allah, we will reconnect by re-entering into His protection and into His safety. It's like a child who's looking out of the door, looking out of the window in the kitchen door and saying, Mom, I want to go outside and play. Mom's saying it's going to rain. Child goes, No, Mom, it's not raining. It's just cloudy, but I want to go out and play. And the child is adamant, and Mom unlocks the door, and out the child goes. And the second the child heals, hears the thunder, and sees the lightning and starts feeling the rain fall on his head or her head, she or he runs back into the house. Mom, it's raining. Allah, I want to live my life. Allah said, it's raining out there. Don't do it. But Allah, I know better. I can take care of myself. So the last 11 months, Allah unlocked the door. Go where you want to go. But now is the moment as we are stuck in the midst of this storm, to run back in and say to Allah, Allah, it's bad out there. I need to stay with you. So restoring hope and fear. What is this analogy of hope and fear? Let me give you a contemporary example. Four days ago, Peter Mayhew, who was Chewbacca in the Star Wars, he died here in North Texas at the age of 74. He was born in England, seven foot two inches tall. And for those who know Star Wars, know Chewbacca. In 2015, he was bounded to a wheelchair. His height, his weight, his age, and also that depression. 
that depression came into him that, you know what, what is life? But when he was called upon for Star Wars The Force Awakens, he stood right back up out of that wheelchair. He stood right back up and he went and he produced in this movie. He acted in this movie and he also consulted in The Last Jedi to help teach his successor. So in this example, what is hope and what is fear? Hope is that you can do it again. Hope is I can get back to Allah again. Hope is Allah will receive me again. Hope is that I will succeed and thrive through my connection with Allah once more. And what is fear? Fear is that you just might not make it through to the end. As much as we hope for the arrival of Ramadan, which inshallah is two days away, it is two nights away, we fear that we may not get through the entire month of Ramadan. We fear that we may not be able to pick up all the resources and the gems and the rewards of Ramadan. This is called restoring hope and fear as we reconnect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are reconnecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by entering into His protection. Why do we need to do it now? Why can't we do it later? Simple. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Himself in a hadith of Qudsi states, "Asawmu li wa ana ajzibi." He did not say, "Al masjidu li wa ana ajzibi." He did not say, "As salatu li wa ana ajzibi." He did not say, "Al hajju li wa ana ajzibi." He said, "Fast is for me, and I am the reward. The door to come back to Allah is in Ramadan." That door is open specifically for this purpose. It is not open any other time of the year, nor is it open for any other given practice mandated in Islam. So, okay, I want to restore that hope and fear. I want to reconnect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What's the means? What's the path? What's the direction? How do I navigate myself? My dear brothers and sisters, I said it before multiple times and I'll say it again today. The month of Ramadan isn't about fasting. The month of Ramadan is about the Holy Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is directing you. He's navigating your life in these 30 days, in these 30 nights of Ramadan by telling us, Shahr Ramadan al-ladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. If you want to restore that hope and fear, if you want to reconnect with Allah, if you want to return under His protection and safety, you need to turn on the navigation of the Holy Qur'an. Well, Imam, I read Quran in prayer every day. I read Quran every Friday, or the day I have an exam, or every morning I read Surah Yasin. What's so different? One is, my dear friends, driving around Plano, and one is driving somewhere in Plano. You could drive all day and burn as much gas as you want to. Keep in mind the gas prices are going up. But you're not going to get anywhere. But if you drive from point A with a point B in mind, you're going to get somewhere. That requires steps. If we want the Qur'an to navigate our path, I ask you all to remember three things about the Holy Qur'an. Number one, the Qur'an is a treasure. The Qur'an is a treasure, i.e. what lies within the pages and the lines of this book, not the book. Not the line, not the pages, not the chapters. What lies within it, what is concealed within it, what is hidden from the eye is the treasure that you and I need to unlock. And we need to unlock it by starting with the verse, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Well, we see that all the time. Again, one is driving and roaming about, and one is going somewhere. The reason that we say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim isn't because it's a prayer, rather it's a declaration. 
It is the declaration that when you read tafsir, you find out it is not the word Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. There is a hidden sentence behind the scenes that you need to acknowledge first before you say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And that is, Amantu billahi wa bi kitabihi wa abda'u Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. That I have brought complete faith in Allah and His Messenger. When I open this book from tomorrow, when I open this book from the glorious month of Ramadan, it is not because I need to do it, or it's a ritual, or it's a culture, or because I'm getting more reward. I'm doing it because I am now submitting and surrendering. Faith is submission. In Ramadan, we are surrendering. We are surrendering to Allah by saying, I have brought, com- brought complete faith on you, O Allah. I have brought complete faith on your book. And with those two, Abda'u, I am starting, Bismillah rahman rahim in the name of Allah, the most gracious and the most merciful. Try it. I tell people, don't learn your religion. Feel your religion. If you want to feel your religion, you need to do your religion. And you don't need to just do your religion, you need to do it right. You can't be roaming around in Plano anymore. You need to be driving somewhere in Plano. So number one, unlock the treasure of the Holy Quran in this blessed month. Number two, realize that the Quran is a living miracle. Everything in this world has a date attached to it. Everything has a light attached with it. The Quran has boundless time. It is the miracle of a prophet that lives on till this day. We can talk about and listen to and read about stories of prophets and messengers. May Allah's peace and mercy be upon all of them. And the stories of their great miracles. But those miracles are no more. But there's one miracle from our beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam that you and I have. We don't have Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa today, but we have the miracle that he gifted to us. Understand it's alive. Understand its potency, its effectiveness is still today with you as it was with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa yesterday in the Sahaba and it will be with your great-grandchildren tomorrow insha'Allah. So the Qur'an is a treasure. The Qur'an is a living miracle. And last but not least, it is a line of communication with Allah. Ali radiallahu ta'ala said, when I want to talk to Allah, I engage in prayer. And when I want Allah to talk to me, I open the Qur'an. But Imam, I don't know Arabic. I don't know the language. You don't need to know the language to enjoy it and to benefit from it. To replenish your heart and to sow the seeds of goodness, you don't need to know the language. You just need to surrender to Allah's will in Allah's book. Now what's the steps? You've told me that there is a path, there is a goal. What do I take? A bicycle, a skateboard, a motorcycle, or an 18 wheeler? What do I do? Well, the steps for that successful connection is taught to us indirectly from a hadith recorded by Talaq ibn Habib uh, regarding Abu Darda radiallahu ta'ala. It is said that one day, companions came running to Abu Darda and said, Ihtaraqa baytuk, your house has burned down. Now of course, he couldn't go to his mobile phone and say, hey, guess what, ADT didn't send me a notification for that one. Of course, there was no mobile phones. But word of mouth meant something. When people said something, they meant something. And he responded, Mahtaraqa bayti, my house has not burned down. Long story short, his house didn't burn down. The neighborhood burned, burned down, but his house didn't burn down. The fire stopped. And he said in the hadith, he says, that I learned from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whoever says these words in the beginning of the day, no calamity will befall them until the evening comes. And whoever says them in the evening, no calamity will befall them until morning comes. I.e. full security and protection from Allah directly and through his angels. It's a long dua, but I want to read to you just a translation because there's one line in it that is the point of my discussion. Oh Allah, you are my Lord. There is no God but you. In you I put my trust and you are the Lord of the mighty throne. Whatever Allah wills happens and whatever he does not will does not happen. There is no power and no strength except with Allah the highest almighty. I know that Allah has power over all things and that Allah has encompassed all things with his knowledge. Oh Allah. 
listen carefully here. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min sharri nafsi wa min sharri kulli daba. Oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from the evil of my own self. Oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from the evil of myself and the evil of every living creature whose forelock is in your hand, my Lord is on the straight path. The key to making yourself a valid candidate to benefit from Allah's word in this blessed month of Ramadan is to number one, seize the evils of yourself. Our world is full of problems. All of which began with the word I. I will. I think. I am determined to. I will wipe you out. I will destroy you. I will make sure no one talks to you. It's all starting with I. And the beautiful protection that thought that he sought through the words and advice of Rasulullah which actually protected his house had this beautiful sentence in it that when we seize the evils of ourselves by seeking Allah's protection from our own evils first, then the world will be on the path to a better state. If I can stop myself and I can stop worrying about others, I will be able to create self-control. Abu Huraira radiallahu reports that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said that fasting is a shield. So one of you, when they are fasting, they should neither indulge in obscene language, nor should they raise their voice in anger. And if someone attacks them or insults them, فَقُلْ إِنِّي صَائِمْ Say, I'm fasting. Today I'm working on myself. You could say what you want to me. You could quarrel with me. Today it's about me. I don't care about you. Focus on yourself. Forgive everyone. Forget everyone. You will heal. You will gain. You will rise stronger. You will gain confidence. And you will succeed inshallah. Because in this month, hopefully and maybe inshallah, if we all do just that, build ourselves and seek protection from our own evils, maybe inshallah, just maybe, we will emerge after Eid as 1.7 billion Muslims who have become the solution for the problems of this world, inshallah. So once again, we are approaching an opportunity to restore and to reconnect. We will restore hope in action by means of the virtues provided, fearing that we will not get them all done in time. We will also reconnect with our master by watching ourselves and doing just that. In a very lengthy hadith, the Prophet Muhammad gathered his Sahaba one evening in the last night of Sha'ban and he said to them, to them Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, لَقَدْ أَظَلَّكُمْ شَهْرٌ عَظِيمٌ شَهْرٌ مُبَارَكٌ شَهْرٌ فِيهِ لَيْلَةٌ خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ شَهْرٌ A beautiful month is coming upon you. A great month has come upon you. It's a blessed month. It is a month which is a night, which within is a night, which is better than a thousand months. Allah has made compulsory in it fasting by day and voluntary to pray by night. Whoever draws near to Allah by performing any optional deed shall receive the reward of perform performing an obligatory deed. And whoever discharges an obligatory deed in this month shall receive the reward of performing 70 obligations at any other time. When you talk about hope, the Prophet ﷺ began this month by inspiring his Sahaba and giving them that hope. If you don't pray, pray, Allah will give you the reward of 70 prayers. If you do something good, you will get the reward of an obligatory act. This month is grand. This month is epic. This month is the greatest thing we could ever ask for. For I swear by Allah, if you and I were to realize the importance and virtue of this month, we would wish the entire year would be like Ramadan. The Prophet ﷺ goes on to say, in this month, it is a month of patience. This is a month of patience. This is a month of patience. This is a month of patience. And the reward of patience is heaven. Whoever gives food to a fasting person to break their fast shall have his sins forgiven and will be saved from the fire of hell and shall have the same reward as the fasting person without any diminish to their reward. Let me say one thing on this. Help break the fast 
of your fellow Muslims. It's sufficient, as the Sahaba inquired, we don't have the means. I don't have the means to spend thousands and thousands of dollars for a luxury buffet in my home to show it to people I can feed them to get this reward. The Sahaba said we do not have the ability. The Prophet ﷺ said, Allah will give you this reward if you give a date, a sip of water or some yogurt, it's done. So let us revive this sunnah. Let us revive feeding the poor and the needy. Let us revive feeding those who are more in need and worthy than ourselves. Let us stop the parties and celebrations. No one celebrates that they have exams. They only celebrate when they succeed from those exams. Ramadan is your exam, my fellow Muslims. No need to celebrate it. Enter into solitude. Seclude yourself. Help each other with the simple of things. Simplest of things. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the grand celebration to come Where you will celebrate your success on the day of Eid May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open the eyes of our hearts And allow us to benefit from this great month that's to come Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah wa kafa Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa mawala Amma ba'd So again my dear brothers and sisters Let's take it home very simple Because the topic of today's khutbah is let the season begin And what we're talking about is restoration and reconnection Restoring hope and fear Hope that we'll get it done with a fear that time may not be there and reconnecting ourselves by re-entering into Allah's protection. Let Allah handle our world now. Let Allah handle the affairs of our community now. Let Allah navigate the path of your homes now. Let Allah take the reins and control of your life now. It's done. We failed. You should say it yourself. We failed and I failed. But Allah will never fail. For His record is perfect. Lastly, two things. If I opt out from Ramadan because I have exams, I have finals, or I'm working a really tough schedule, I'm working long days, can I opt out from Ramadan? Brothers and sisters, if you believe in your body and you don't believe in Allah, nothing's going to help you. A brother took Shahada by me 14 years ago. Marco from Guam. He was a roofer, and he fasted the entire month of Ramadan on the roofs of Florida. If he can do it, I tell myself, when I had my kidney problems, I can do it also. Because he's a living example to me that nothing will stop your spiritual growth except for yourself. That is why we make the dua, Oh Allah, I seek protection in you from my evils, from the evils of myself. Abu Umama radiallahu reported that he came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and said, order me to do a deed that will allow me to enter paradise. And the Prophet sallallahu responded, stick to fasting as there is no equivalent to it. Stick to fasting as there is no equivalent to it. Stick to fasting as there is no equivalent to it. I came to him over and over again and this was his response. So my fellow Muslims, as we close this afternoon, as we prepare to seclude ourselves from the worries of the world, from the news and the problems, from the do's and don'ts that the world tells us, let us do one more thing collectively. Tomorrow is our local election. I spoke about this and I'm, I, I, I am not apologetic if you're tired of hearing this from me. Because many of us don't know what happens in our cities because of policies. We are ignorant or unaware of this. But let it be known, let it be known very clearly that Islamophobia is on the rise here in Plato. And certain candidates are using your religion, your faith, your family, your masjid, the color of your skin, the languages you speak, the religion you profess to incite fear. We are as American as anyone else. 
We are Muslim first and we are American second. I'll tell you why. Because my Islam teaches me how to be a best citizen in any country I go to. Without my Islam, I am defective. My Allah teaches me to uphold trust, to honor the society, to contribute to society and make my world a better place. I am a Muslim first and I am American second. It is your obligation to vote, my dear fellow Muslims. And tomorrow is the day that will determine what happens in the next four years in the city of Plano. Less than a thousand Muslims in a county that is close to 20,000 Muslims. Less than a thousand Muslims has voted. Shame on us. If you have a fatwa, give it to me. If you don't, go and vote. Tomorrow morning from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The polling stations have changed. Look online and find out your polling station. If you did an absentee ballot and it was rejected, go in person and vote. I'm not talking about who you should vote for. Vote. Because what our number will show and reflect on the city of Plano that 9,000 Muslims voted, regardless who you voted for. The candidates will come to you to serve you because you are a chunk of the city. If we remain divided, Allah will put us in a state that we will not be able to help ourselves. The hand of Allah's protection is with the jama'ah, with the congregation, with the ummah and the unity. Let us all unite. Let us fulfill our obligations to Allah, to ourselves, to our families, to our masjid, to our ummah and our community, and to the larger community that we reside in. We send salutations and blessings upon Muhammad and Mustafa, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who guided us, who mentored us through his actions beyond his words, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, in Allahu wa malaikatahu yusallun. على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا اللهم ألف بين قلوبنا وأصلح ذات بيننا واهدنا سبل السلام وجنبنا الفواحش ما ظهر منها وما بطن اللهم باركنا في شعبان وبلغنا رمضان اللهم بلغنا رمضان اللهم بلغنا رمضان والله those who are sick give them help والله those who have passed away grant them forgiveness from your treasures and make their grave the grave the garden of paradise والله raise them on the day of judgment with their families and the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم والله make the journey ahead easy for them. O oh Allah, those who are suffering, alleviate their suffering, and those who are in difficulty, remove their difficulties. O oh Allah, allow us to see this blessed month of Ramadan. Allow us to succeed through this blessed month of Ramadan. Allow us to emerge from this month of Ramadan in a progressive state as we continue to build ourselves closer to you. Allahumma shi marwana wa aafi mubtalana wa rahmahu ta'ala ya rabbal alameen. Ameen ya rabbal alameen. Ameen ya rabbal alameen. Ameen ya rabbal alameen. Inna Allah ya amur bil adu l-ihsan. وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون. Please uh, make your li- please form your lines. Uh, please stand shoulder to shoulder. Ensure that our lines are straight and complete. Please fill any gap that is in front of you and do not form another line until the line in front of you is complete. As it was announced before the khutbah, inshallah after the prayer immediately we have a sister who is going to be taking the shahada upstairs. Please give us three minutes. We will give her the shahada inshallah. Request the sisters to welcome her and inshallah to congratulate her and give her the support that she needs. Jazakumullah khair. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة